this is the um, second video on the Enchanted Castle coasters. I had I had I had decided that it would be a lot more fun to do some to do these Enchanted Castles with a little bit of a with a little bit of a um, cloud layer, so it looked like the castles were floating in the clouds. So it does definitely um, follow the exact same pattern as the first video I did, which I will link, um, that shows how I did the first layers. I, I um, took a, I coated the coaster in a really pretty sparkle powder. So in this case, I used some chameleon powder and I used the Let, Let's Resin. You can use any mica powder I've learned to do this. So the first in the first video, I used the Stardust to coat the coasters and it looked it looked beautiful but in, I just wanted to try something different for this set so I used this is a lighter pink which is this one and this is a purple which is this one so just for fun to see how you know what the different effects are of, of coating the coaster uh, mold itself inside uh, with a chameleon powder so then I put in uh, the purple layers and then of course your little stars and galaxy so um, it's super, super easy, super thin. I just took a purple, put it in there, and then the next day I took clear and put in some little planets and sparkles. So that first video shows the step one and step two of me doing, of me doing those two things. And I use a, I'm using the um, cutout versions from, I use my Cricut to cut out. It's a, it's a, it's a layered castle effect. So this is the first layer. This is the second layer, this is the third, and this is the little fence that goes in the front. So today on this layer, we're using the first layer of the castle. And I find these extremely whimsical and fun. Um, and I'm making them in fairly large coasters. So these are uh, five inch coasters and the end result looks like this so that you can have a layered coaster look to it so <clears throat> we're going for these today and I made some with a little bit different colors so we will do a pink one actually a pink one and a blue and a bluish one right here so the idea on these two is it's a little bit tricky sometimes to get the castles in a place where the next layer, as you go up, you'll be able to see all the way back to the last layer um, so that they're not too stacked on top of each other. So that first layer goes up pretty high inside the, inside the mold itself. It seems a little off-centered, but it really isn't in the end when you're finished with it. So the first, the first set of these I did, and just so you know, I have a whole bunch of them I'm working on. So you'll see more resin than what you would think I should have out because I'm doing more than one at once. I have I had decided that after doing the last set, when I put these in and I put the clear coat on, um, it it uh, would float it would float this piece. So when I cut out Cricut piece, you know the Cricut pieces, I chose foil type paper or even the adhesive. Um, so there's a some of them have a sticker back, and this this particular one is foil. If you pour just the resin in, it kind of floats up and I had to keep pushing it down. So we're gonna glue, just put a little bit of glue in to glue them into place so that when I put the resin in, I won't have to come back and keep making sure that, that they're pushed down. Because when you're doing this many layers, you can see how, how tight, how much space I have to go in this coaster. I don't wanna have to put more layer, uh, put more in there than I have to. So I just got this, it's regular glue. And I just put little points of glue because we don't need a whole lot. And I use clear just in case it gets gets put in a spot that I don't like. You won't be able to see it all the way through. Also see the description below to find where 
I, I got these beautiful castle cuts from an Etsy shop <clears throat> and this, I will put links in the description. Um, this shop is has got and these are meant for um, they make beautiful cards like Christmas cards and fantasy cards and so these cuts were meant for a card and what I did was I, um, I bought the, the cuts and then I shrunk them. So I literally had to shrink them to fit a coaster. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's for a regular card. And they have these beautiful winter Christmas scenes, beautiful globes, beautiful cutouts meant to use on your um, Cricut. But, I mean, there's a whole lot of ideas there you could use to make some beautiful coasters at Christmas time or, or like these coasters that I, I just fell in love with the castle as soon as I saw it. So when I put that in there, it will you will see the, where I got these but remember when you go and if you look and you're interested in getting it I had to shrink it I had to actually um, measure these out to see how big I wanted the castle to be and then shrink it to um, fit um, to, to what would fit in a coaster and I chose that's what the other reason why I chose larger coasters for these because the cricket <laughs> <laughs> might not have been able to do the detail of the little ramparts in the, of the castle if I had made it small enough for a standard size coaster. I haven't tried it. Or I guess I could take this and just cut them and, and just make little uh, make the same size castle inside those. I haven't got that far yet, but I plan on giving that a try at some point because I think oh, a set of standard si size coasters with this design would be a lot of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and... Um, let these dry for a minute and then we'll come back for the next step. Okay, so our next step is going to be to paint the first cloud layer into onto the coaster. And it's what we're gonna do is use alcohol inks and some daubers, little sponge daubers to put, um, because it's just for clouds. This is the the daubers that I use. I know there's a lot of different um, different types of these, but these are super cheap. They're like a, you know, two dollars at at uh, Michaels. And since it's uh, alcohol ink, you know I have to. You can wash them off, but it's once you've used a certain color on it, you kind of end up having to use the same color over and over. <laughs> So for the first layer of clouds that we do, this this paper I haven't got I haven't I've glued it down and it's and it's um there has not been any resin put on it so we're gonna paint the first layer of clouds on here and then we're gonna put a let, let it dry and then we're gonna put a layer of a thin layer of resin over the top and then tomorrow we'll come back and put the second layer castle and clouds and repeat until we have all the cloud layers. So the alcohol inks that I'm going to use will be this sparkly lilac. This is called uh, purple violet, as you can see. I made a mess on the top of it. Um, white, of course, because clouds, <clears throat> the bottom layer of the clouds. And then I'm going to use a rose color. This one is also a sparkly version of it. Another way to, to put sparkle and alcohol ink is to take a um, any kind of any mica powder like a uh, like a standard mica powder and mix it with just alcohol and then you can also um, use that as a beautiful uh, whichever color so if you don't have alcohol inks that you like you can use mica powders mixed with alcohol so we're going to use some white Got a lot of coasters to work with, so I'll probably use every single drop of that, just so you know. If not, I can easily pour it back in. I have a little funnel. I bought a funnel for pouring alcohol ink back in when I mess it up. <clears throat> that is a rose sparkle. This is the purple violet. And the bottom layer of clouds is always, for when I'm working on them, going to be the darkest. And so we've got rose and purple and then I will use a lavender which is a lighter purple and let me see sometimes it's fun to use a blue just a plain blue to give a different effect in the background We've got our alcohol inks. I'm 
gonna use a dauber that is specific, that I only will put this one particular dauber in the white so that when I uh, use it again later, <laughs> um, it doesn't get mixed. So I usually set aside one to be specifically white and then the others try to keep the colors together, but it, after a while with alcohol ink, it, it doesn't really matter. So the first layer really only matters that you go around the bottom edge because the bottom edge of the coaster is really the only place you're going to see this layer. And I kind of like to go up onto the side of the castle a little bit like that so that when you look back into it, you can see that the castle is sitting on, um, basically, it looks like, it'll look like it's sitting on um, clouds. Also, don't be afraid, if you prefer to use a paintbrush, use a paintbrush. And this layer will be the least seen, even, even this particular part of the castle. So um, once, there's a little hair there. So remembering that this is the only part of the clouds that are gonna be seen on this layer and tomorrow when we come back and put the second layer, it'll be a little bit lower and we'll just keep doing that over and over. Here's, a, here's that original just to show you. You can basically, the little tiny ones in the back there is the only place that you can really see that first layer. You can see it on the edge right there. That's it. So we're not gonna put a whole lot of effort into trying to cover the coaster in clouds today because of that. So we're gonna do purple. And I do have a hair dryer that I'm gonna use to, to dry this. It also pushes the alcohol ink in really neat ways. So I use a hair dryer when I'm working with the actual alcohol ink, but when I use the resin, it will be a heat gun. So I'm, I'm letting you know that in case it looks, I don't want you to be confused by, I would never recommend using a heat gun directly on alcohol ink. Alcohol ink is incredibly flammable and I spend a lot of time um, making sure before I get out the heat gun that I've moved alcohol inks away. And um, it's, it's a hundred percent flammable. Let me tell you, it's uh, something you want to be really, really careful about. This is the rose color. Now, this I always let this this layer be really dark because, the you know, in my in my imagination, the clouds in the background are going to be the darkest clouds in a picture. So I make these darker, and then that also sets them apart from the other layers. I'm going to turn on the hair dryer. ink absolutely wants to dry so it will dry quickly and I'm gonna put in my some blue for contrast And then once you're done, I, I will, where's my, there it is. Well, I'll, I'll take a, I'll take a little bit of the white on the end of the, um, on the end of the paintbrush, kind of separate out the lines just a little bit.
that's what my first layer of clouds is going to look like on the coasters. So I'm going to let these dry. I'm going to do the rest and let these dry. And then, um, and, and by dry, I mean the paint, which only takes a couple minutes. You can dry it with the hair dryer and be done really quickly. Or you can, you know, paint them on, come back in a little while and add, and add more to it. Um, or, you know, let it dry and then just instantly do your next layer of resin. So I'm going to do the coasters and then I'll come back for the next layer of resin in a couple of minutes. Okay, now we are ready to put in our resin layer. I waited until the, the alcohol ink is completely dry so that um, it doesn't float up into the resin. These layers have to be extremely thin because we have a lot more layers to go when it comes to the next castle and the next layer of clouds. So I usually pour them in, pour in a little bit of resin in the center, and then just kind of scoop this around, try and make it as thin as possible. Also on this layer, <clears throat> I want to put a little bit of um, glitter or uh, it's like snow or um, glitter glitter for, for fun on the, this layer around the cloud area. Use a torch to pop any of the micro bubbles, and then I'll probably hit hit it with the torch a couple more times in the next in the next hour because because as the bubbles keep coming up, I'll pop them, just make them as clear as possible. So this is the first cloud layer and the first castle layer. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up the rest of these, and I'll be back tomorrow to do the next layer. We are back for our castle layer two. And these cuts with the Cricut are actually stickers so I, these are easier to to put on the coaster
Now we're going to start working on our second layer of clouds and it's going to be a little bit <clears throat> the same as yesterday where we're really only going to concentrate on the edge, the part that will eventually um, only be the part that is seen. <clears throat> I'm going to also bring back yesterday's example too. So we've already done the first layer. Today we're going to do this second layer which coincides with the second layer of, of the uh, castle. <clears throat> So it's pretty, they're pretty easy. I also like to involve some more whimsical colors. So I'm gonna, today I'm gonna use a little bit of mint green. And this is a shimmer, shimmery um, called mint uh, Bria Reese alcohol ink. And I am using all alcohol inks when I, on the, with the daubers <clears throat> for this. And I will use a bright, bright pink. This is um, called Senorita Magenta, I believe. That's how you pronounce it. This is lavender. I think I'm going to use the violet, purple violet. And of course, white. I have a couple neon colors too that I found from Briaris to try on this project. So I have the pink and the 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 neon pink and the neon purple, and instead of daubing them, I'm, I will put like little drops on there. So going to be working on one coaster and I'll do the rest off camera <laughs> so you don't have to watch every single one. So the second layer of clouds that comes back around this way and then that way you can kind of see some of the shimmer and some of the colors from yesterday. And also keep in mind too that when you're going to be seeing this this part of the castle you're only really going to be seeing this much of the castle so if it gets sloppy right here it's it's perfectly fine you won't be able to see that in the end and this is that senorita margarita color Meat. Oh, maybe not. Hold on. Let me get a different topper. Use a white topper. There we go. Oh, it's a really light color. A couple accents of green on here. And since the color is so light, I don't think it'll show that well. So let me try. A bit of turquoise instead. And I grab some uh, turquoise, turquoise. There we go.
And I want this layer of clouds to be a little bit lighter, lighter <clears throat> than the next layer. So from this point, once it's a, a little bit, once you have your colors kind of set on, I start to da dab white on <clears throat> because white will take on the colors that are already there and kind of lighten it up. It's actually a really neat effect. I really love watching alcohol inks at work. Now I want to use a little bit of this um, neon. So I'm going to let this dry. I'm going to um, <clears throat> do the rest of them and then we'll come back to do another thin layer of resin and uh, prep it for tomorrow. We are now ready to go ahead and put the, la um, the next layer of resin on the, on the little castles. Uh, one of the things that I typically do before I uh, before I put the this resin layer on is to outline the little clouds with a silver lining. And um, <clears throat> sorry, I have a little bit of a cold. Just to give it that whimsical, you know, castle in the clouds look. So I will just take a, a this is a, a just a gel pen, and I will outline that will, the first layer that I did yesterday. So you can see the little 
silver lining that I put all around there. And I'm only doing it on the layer from yesterday. So tomorrow when we paint our next layer on, then I'll do the silver lining on the one we do today. And the reason I do it that way is simply because a three-dimensional look is kind of cool. So it, it would it would look cool it, even, no matter what if I would if I, even if I waited till the very last layer to outline the clouds. It also helps you see you know the difference between, but it looks kind of cool if you do it in between each layer. Um, but it's also extremely optional. So. Um, before um, I'm getting ready to put that last layer of thin layer of resin in here, first I'm going to go ahead and and, make, and outline, put my silver lining on the clouds, <clears throat> and then I will just go ahead and do that last layer of resin. We are back the next day <clears throat> and we are ready for the final castle layer before we do the, um, the final, well, the final layer of the castle building and then next we will do the, the sparkly fence that goes right in the front. So these were also uh, Cricut cutouts and I used the vinyl with a sticker back on them. One of the difficulties with making or shrinking this castle so tiny is that the little flags on the end of the, um, the towers don't always come off with the sticker, but the castle is just as pretty with or without them. It was also, um, b because I'm a bit of a, you know, wanting it to be perfect, I went through and I flipped out each window with this little poker <laughs> because um, otherwise it kind of starts to um, they accumulate like confetti over the top of this so that's just an FYI and it's and it's because this is sticker paper that it that they do that but if you want to have a better um, or choose a different um, final to use for the final that's just an FYI to use, uh, uh, FYI to you about the difficulty of these teeny tiny cuts. <clears throat> I think it would also be extremely fun to blow this up and do a tray, a big giant um, castle tray. I think the effect of that is really beautiful. Okay, so this castle is going to be mainly seen. So if you get smudges on it, I recommend just taking an alcohol wipe and kind of wiping it off, off the front of it so that there's no smudges on the actual vinyl, which, as you know, is going to happen with something that's shiny when you're, you know, using your fingers to manipulate it. <clears throat> 
So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the this layer of clouds. And once again, I'm just going to do another U shape coming up one edge from the one we did yesterday. But I'm only going to use um, two colors, pink and purple and well, white, three colors. Because and then tomorrow the final cloud layer will just be two colors, so that the so that the cloud layers get lighter and lighter and lighter as we go up. Um, I am not going to go across the front of this castle except for maybe on the corners, because tomorrow, right before we put on, tomorrow we're going to do it a little bit different in that the fence will be put on after we do the final cloud layer. So. Tomorrow we will do the final cloud layer, and once we do that, we're going to go bring the clouds all the way up to the top of the uh, to the top of the castle. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put this on speed because you've already seen me paint clouds, and it's going to be the same exact thing, only with two different color or two you know two different colors today for a lighter for a lighter version, and then of course I will outline each with the silver lining and then we'll do our final clear coat and then tomorrow we'll be back. we're back to after I've painted the little clouds on. I did the second cloud layer outline. Now we're going to put a thin layer of resin in these and then I'm going to make some cloud swirls. Usually do some cloud swirls above the castle. You can see them right here and I do them in this layer because it you know they're right in the center of all of your layers.
Today we are going to do our last layer on these beautiful little enchanted coasters. Um, so today is the final cloud which will cover the rest of the space here and then we're going to go ahead and glue these little gates down and then I will go ahead and add resin on top of that and that should complete our design. Just so you're aware the cuts that I have provided the um, in the link the where I where I purchased this design this castle design I cut this edge off the bottom we're gonna paint over it on the bottom of this castle so you won't see it but it it doesn't really look right with that little divot so all I did was cut it cut a straight line around the bottom of this so of course that's gonna be entirely up to you but for me this fits better and I also cut a little edge off so that the castle will fit snug inside the coaster. So you have plenty of time to make sure your little gates are going to fit on each of the coasters. And um, I just wanted to make sure you realize that I cut these or trimmed the bottom line off of them so that the castle um, gate would be straight. So now I'm going to paint the last castle layer. And then from there, we were, we're going to glue these down on top of that. And then we'll put in our, our resin. But um, I will only show you, I'll only paint one so you don't have to watch the whole process. We are ready to put on our last layer of resin. And this set of coasters is, is one of the sets that I don't sand in the end. So because it's a, uh, I use the diamond edge 
coaster molds. We're going to fill these and then uh, they'll be completed once we've, once we've put in that fire final layer. So it gets a little bit tricky in making sure that no hairs or anything fall to the top and also exactly how full that you fill the coaster mold. So you don't wanna fill the coaster mold to the top and I will go ahead and, and do this to show you kind of what you're looking for when it comes to making sure these are filled in a way that they come out smooth and pretty. And they don't stick to the mold. So I have filled it, let me see if I can get some edge on it there, to where you can see that there's no bump from the castle at all, but you can also see around the edge that it does, I have not filled it all the way to the top, and the way that edge hits, it's going to make a slight little lip off the edge, but it will look, you won't need to sand it unless the coaster, you know, sticks to it or does something strange. So I have not filled these up to the top and I will, I will fill it this full. Let's see if I can get it really good. There you go. You can kind of see how it still has the, it will create a lip around the edge. It's not full to the top, but it is pretty close. And there's no ripple across the top of the resin to show where the castle has been laid in there and one of the things you have to be careful with too is sometimes right here on the edge of the, of the little gate it will lift and that's why I glued it down but you still want to kind of double check that that doesn't peek up in outside the resin and in this case it hasn't and let me go ahead and pull out my coaster that I've been comparing this whole time so you can see how that looks when it dries. There's a slight lip on this coaster. And it's actually really nice because it's one of those things that kind of keeps the, the cup on top. Or if you want to make these into magnets, of course. But you can see that it is com not completely flush because of the way resin interacts to the sides of, of silicone molds. But it still looks really nice. So, so that's how I'm going to fill all of these so that they have that slight little lip. They're not, the resin isn't going to the top of the mold, but it will have a really nice effect in the end.